They say Baltimore is a small town, and I agree, but I sure wouldn't want to have to paint it. Uh, Dan Cuddy and I have known each other for about 35 years, even though we didn't know that. Uh, he graduated from Loyola College, my alma mater, in 74. I graduated four years later in 78. And we've been sort of uh, pinballing around with each other, and we discover, rediscovered each other on Facebook, and it's been a great uh, friendship yeah. since then. Dan is, a, uh, as I said, a graduate of Loyola College. He's been an editor for a number of years. He was a uh, contributing editor for uh, Maryland Poetry Review. He was an assistant editor at Light, Baltimore's literary newspaper. And he has been widely published, uh, his poetry has been widely published. He's going to read some of his new stuff tonight to you. But let me, uh, I don't want to paraphrase, he's been published in the Antioch Review, no flies, uh, Bitter, uh, Oleander, Connecticut River Review, Nebo, Puerto del Sol, and the Wisconsin Review. That's a pretty good list. Uh, and so Dan's going to read to you from his uh, latest stuff. Thank you. Okay, I've, got a, I've also got a couple of books for sale for ten bucks. Got three of them. That's it. So you know. Okay. The main only thing to really know about this particular poem it takes place in Vienna, Graben. Graben is a, a main street in the, in the main part of the city in, in, in Vienna. I'm not know that. This is called baggage. There are drunks in Vienna on the steps of churches, cursing, praying, sleeping, whatever comes naturally to disciples of excess. The minds are in the graben, speechless in the city of music, silent tears call it. I lit a ten shilling candle in St. Stephen's in the imperial shadows of ages past. It rained sorrow, a convulsive sob in the shower. My socks got wet, grief soaked to the bone. Your mother's death only happens once. This poem is called Navajo Country. Navajo Country is large on the map, but what is nothing enclosed? Navajo Country, bare rock, sand, scrub plants, no casino yet this day, 2006. There's coal, but the slurry mine closed. Environment, the bad people say. If there were oil, surely Mr. White Man and his orchestra would move the engines out of there. The smoke signals these days, cigarettes. So many abandoned, cannibalized cars, the chrome shining into the distance on the reservation reserved like turquoise to bejewel the land. Preserved and quaint, the talk of the great spirit by Ivy. The true voice is the wind, which is listened listen to, not spoken on. Where do we go when we lie absent in the room? People coming, saying what we do not hear. Where do we go on the other side of shadow, in the silence between words, in the sky we pray to. Where do we go? There are lights in the room, lights in the sky, but do we see? Do we see with our eyes closed? Is there more in the wind than in the absence we will become? I'm gonna change this main thing about reading in a bar is you gotta keep it simple, you gotta be loud, you know, don't get too, but this is, this is, this is a crazy poem about uh, they had this problems out on Belair Road with skaters and all. So this is a crazy poem about that. They are skating on Belair Road. The ball bearings are rolling on the beltway. The police chase. The critics' strings pluck harp about teenagers. No one is weaned off the rioting by mobs of skaters. Not Hans Brinker, but Walter the Chief, the sinkhole sinker, sparking his chrome skate on the poor macadam. He bows to every sir and madam, smile stained with disdain. And you, who is I, have lost your quiet. The neighborhood has gone to pot, a cloud of it over the beltway. The cops, the gentry, the unpaid rent, the, the merry chase, all the way in a Chevy. Politicians will levy tax onto medicinal Mary Jane. <coughs> Butterscotch will never be the same. Blame those who skate Belair Road.
This is the melting of the snows. The silence of the snows first translates into an itching trickle. Then the gathering plunges, pours down, and the rock, that seemingly solid rock, is scraped, scourged with lashing waters. The creeks, the rivers rage. Or maybe it is joy that tumbles all over itself down into the valleys. And if you are human, a puny little thing, compared to mountains and rivers, don't be swept up by too much joy, too much reverence. The human can't ride the rapids. Just look on the natural world like a wide-eyed moon in awe. And I'm going to finish up with just uh, three poems about, it's, it's Veterans Day. Now, we celebrate veterans. But, I mean, these are, these are actually some people in the Army. I don't know if I celebrate them. I was in the Army, okay? So, first one is Private Pigpen Jones. These are kind of portraits. I see his tousled hair, curly brown, hamster wet tail hair, the head that had to be dragged from bed, the young pot-bellied drunk hung over, eyes half-masked, the day already at taps, and the first words, let me ten bucks till payday. <laughs> Every day, the same Private Jones, a wastebasket full of sleep, the sour taste his sober life must have had, the slits looking into the mirror to see if he was still there, and he was. So if he could find a sucker, he'd take his borrowed 10 or 20 or 40 and guzzle himself down the long chute to death. This is portrait of two soldiers about basic training. Barker screamed, stood up after the bunker he crawled past blew a startling boom. Instantly, thank God, the machine guns with tracer bullets ceased fire. The sergeant yelled, get down! Even I, certainly no hero, knew they weren't trying to kill him. I crawled through the sand under barbed wire, hugging the ground, expecting an explosion. Oh, I wasn't any better than Barker. I was edgy, but I knew all I had to do, hug the ground, crawl forward. They weren't trying to kill me. This was basic training. Everything was predictable. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, Sergeant Arkins, this is our razor backs, but that's the <laughs> story. Razor backs aren't going too well this year. Right. So we've got some nieces in go to the University of Arkansas. Sergeant Arkansas, stickles, sickles, shekels, steckles. Can't remember the name. Remember the evil grin sitting behind the desk. Sergeant Arkansas let his envy of that what it was drool like a boxer from the side of a baby sneer. Big city college boys don't know nothing. The sergeant usually just aired his grievances like a flag flapping in the breeze. His country was grievance. Life was a motor pool, deadline trucks, kid drivers who couldn't handle a deuce and a half, who didn't check oil, rode with the emergency brake on, backed the tra truck into a fence, <laughs> broke the reflector, didn't know a carburetor from a relay solenoid. Some truth from the bitter mouth. But what did the old guy want? To be first sergeant? To be able to tell the second lieutenant off? Like an old car idly, he sat in his lot in life, sputtered, coughed, spewed nasty smoke. And that was his happiness, the noxious fumes. 